basically, I guess I forgot to film a an introduction to this video. So this is my last couple books of 2021, as well as um, a little wrap up of how I felt about how my reading has gone this year and what my plans are for the next year. So let's jump into that. So this year I have read 153 books and that is not including the Harry Potter books. I have read those with my daughter and did not add them to my Goodreads. So that ends up being about three books a week, which makes sense to me. This year has been different. It has been my year that I started this YouTube channel and that's probably increased my reading a little bit more and kind of focused it. So I feel like I don't just read garbage books. I want to read books that I can really talk about and collect my thoughts on. And so I feel like that has maybe changed my reading a little bit. I, um, I've enjoyed a lot of my reading this year. I tend to read a little more when I'm feeling really anxious and I do not read at all when I'm on vacation or when people are out here visiting. My goal for the coming year is to just read when I want and things that I'm really interested in and not to get caught up with numbers because I do think sometimes I just want to get, you know, like, it's like a video game. I want to get more and more books so that I can say that I've read more and that's probably not very useful to me. Um, I'll probably put a Goodreads goal of 100 books, but I don't want to feel um, obligated at all. I just like to see the little bar fill up on my Goodreads page. Um, but I'm just hoping to read things that I enjoy and that teach me something new. Um, I feel like reading for me is all about learning about different worldviews and seeing the world as a bigger place and learning about um, things historically and um, through fiction, learning about different ideas. And so I, I'm excited. I'm excited for this next year and I hope that I can find some good books. So I do want to review the last three books that I have read this year. The next two, I am pretty sure, I don't really keep good track of this, but I'm pretty sure they were both recommended by um, Fran at Fran Nook in the Pages. And I have loved watching her channel for the last little bit. Um, a lot of my reads lately have been either recommendations from her or Alyssa over at The Redhead. And I am really loving this year watching more booktubers and, um, getting some more various recommendations. So if anyone has good recommendations on channels to follow, I would be very interested in that as well. So let's jump into the first one. The Vanderbeekers of 141st Street by Karina Jan Glaser. And this was super sweet, just super sweet and heartfelt and very seasonally appropriate. I read this on Christmas Eve and it's a, kind of a children's novel and it follows a family that lives in a brownstone apartment and they're the Vanderbeekers and their landlord has decided to not renew their lease for the new year. And all the children have decided that if they can win over the landlord by Christmas, that he will let them stay. And so it's so cute. Like it's just sweet. It, I kind of put it up there with, you know, the best Christmas pageant ever or any of those kinds of books that just, they're not the most like in-depth, gritty or anything. They're just sweet and seasonally appropriate and gets you in the Christmas mood. So I really enjoyed this. I think it's a whole series about the Vanderbeekers and I don't think I will read more of them because, but I think like if you have a, you know, younger child, they would really enjoy all of these. But I liked this one for the Christmassy vibes. It was really fun, kind of cozy. I enjoyed that one a lot. So I read The Girls I've Been by Tess Sharp, and this was a bit of a ride. So this follows um, Nora, and she is in a bank robbery. She's at the bank when the bank gets held up. And we follow two different timelines. One is the bank robbery timeline and the other is Nora's past and you find out that um, her mom was um, a con artist and uh, basically abused her all growing up to be part of these cons and going through all the different life experiences that Nora has had to deal with and 
you can kind of see how that is helping her in the current bank robbery situation and how she's learning and growing through both of those. So I really enjoyed it. I thought it was very engaging, talked a lot about some difficult subjects about like different forms of abuse and um, it was, so that was really difficult to read, but it was also just kind of fast paced and fun. I thought where it was least successful was the bank robbery because just the bank robbers, they weren't written that they were stupid bumbling bank robbers. At least I didn't think so, like not all of them, but I did think that they seemed like off the top of my head, I could think of like five different plans that would be better thought out than these bank robbers idea to rob this bank. Like it just didn't quite work for me in the believability. I feel like there were better ways to get what they were looking for. But on the other hand, her whole story about her life was super engaging and the bank robbery added a lot of like present danger and caused her to realize a lot of things. So like, I think all in all it was great, but just a little bit of the bank robbery wasn't super believable for me, but I did enjoy this one a lot too. I read the book Maybe by Caroline Star Rose and this book was a quick read. You could read it in an hour. It was kind of told in verse. So it was very short and quick to read. And it is about a girl who lived on the prairie who had to survive for, I think it was five months because she was abandoned in this house and she needs to get back to her family. Anyways, it's very much like Little House on the Prairie mixed with a little bit of like I don't know if any of you had to read Hatchet or something like kind of has those vibes but it's a younger reader kind of book it should like it's pretty easy and quick I feel like what this is most successful in is it focused a lot on the main character May and she has dyslexia and it's not called that in the book but she has a difficult time reading and it's something that she really wants and it talks about her struggles to try to learn to read and I feel like this book would probably be great for a younger reader who maybe struggles with longer books and maybe has dyslexia and would like to see, you know, a protagonist that has the same struggles. But also, since it's in such short little stanzas, I think it might be an easier read to um, get involved in reading um, if looking at a page full of text is a little overwhelming. So I thought this had a lot of good uses, especially for a younger audience. I don't know if it will stick with me for a long period of time, but I definitely see where this book has a place and I thought it was pretty good. And that sums up all the books that I have read in the year of 2021. And I will be back for my first video of 2022 with more book wrap ups. And this is all my extra videos that I was planning on doing this week, but I might do some bonus videos every once in a while. Um, if there's anything you want to see, please let me know. And if not, I will just keep doing book wrap ups as I read them. So I will see you all on the next one.